Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to call the regular board meeting of fire commissioners for uh, Benita Springs Fire uh, Wednesday, December 1st, 2021 to order. Please rise. I'd like to have a moment of uh, silence in honor of those firemen who have lost their lives this past month, uh, 12 altogether. And then we'll have a prayer. Dear God, as we give thanks for those that have so um, heroically sacrificed themselves for others, we thank you for them. We thank you for their commitment. I pray that you'll be with the families, Lord, that experience this loss, that you'll watch over them and give them strength. Lord, we pray for protection for our firefighters here in Benita and the surrounding areas. Always watch over them and give them protection. Thank you for their service and their commitment and their sacrifice for others. Thank you for the freedom to meet and the ability to share and uh, just uh, do things in, in, in freedom in this country. Thank you for those that protect it for us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any public comment on agenda items this evening? Seeing none, I need a motion for the approval of the November 8, 2021 regular meeting minutes. So move. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, one motion for the November 2021 and current, er, current expenditures and ACH payments, the acknowledgement of financial report, and the acknowledgement of wire transfers and transfers between accounts. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next item, uh, commissioner's business. Mm -hmm. Anybody would like to say anything? Anybody have anything they want to talk about? I was going to ask the uh, chief if the vehicles were given away already. Yes, uh, the, uh, the town of Alfred and Delwood Fire Department came down two Fridays ago and, and picked them both up and took them back. I got confirmation that they made it back there and they are ecstatic. Um, I think we made a large difference in those two fire departments uh, lives yeah. oh, that's good and the, and the citizens one of them was one of the uh, fire departments that came down says they cover about 900 square miles oh and they're doing it with like a 1983 they need truck a helicopter they got, they don't yeah. <laughs> 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 so. thank well, you that, that makes us feel good yeah, yeah. no it did. they did they did a good thing no, I'm happy that we did that. For yeah, the little bit of good, money we would have gotten out of that, uh, no, that was that was great. Anybody else have anything? Just to remind everybody about the uh, Christmas holiday party in the park on the seventh at four o'clock, four thirty to seven, I believe. Okay. Okay. Next item on the list is uh, presentations, uh, Chief. Uh, first presentation we have is uh, for our administrative assistant, Sarah Getz. As when she first started here, Sarah McDonald, but it's been quite a year for her, as we can see. She's gotten married, and she's got a little guy on the way. We, we all uh, are taking bets now on, on when she's due. So next time you see her, she won't be like she is right now. She'll have another one on the side of her. So uh, it's been quite a year for Sarah. She's done a great job. She's, um, you know, coming here with no... No, no real experience. Like her father was a fire chief, but no real fire experience. She's uh, taken to it real well. She's our main person. She's the first person everybody sees when they walk in the door, and everybody's complimented her on that. Complimented the district on on uh, her representation of the district. So she's done a fabulous job. So I'd like to congratulate her on one year. Uh, next, I'll turn it over to Deputy Chief Madden. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. 
I want to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Trout. Uh, Cynthia Trout is the reason that uh, we're having this Phoenix Award presentation. It's always a pleasure for us to meet people who were able to help, who were able to save. So it's an honor. It's good for us. Normally for us, we put somebody in the back of an ambulance. We don't get to see them again. So we don't get a lot of closure. So this is really good closure for us. It makes us feel good. We get to see how it affects you, how it affects your family. So we give out a Phoenix Award. Phoenix representing rising from the ashes, as you did. And I just learned, actually, as uh, Mrs. Trout got here, this is Mrs. Trout's second cardiac arrest. So she's twice lucky. Twice lucky. <laughs> so we were dispatched to uh, Mrs. Trout's home. Um, she was swimming all day, came in, sat down, and uh, started not to be able to breathe. So we got called in for a shortness of breath. Our crews got there, and uh, Mrs. Trout wasn't doing very well. She was agonal, which means she was breathing very shallow and very slow. They uh, brought her on the floor, and Mrs. Trout went into cardiac arrest. Our crews went to work. We started our pit crew model. We started an IO in her shoulder. An IO is intraosseous. It's just a big needle that goes in your shoulder. That means uh, we can have IV access. Uh, we controlled her airway. We put her on the monitor. She was in a systole, which is flatline. So then our crew started our CPR. We started giving meds, and we started to go to work. She went into PEA, which means it's a pulseless electrical activity current in your, in your conduction system that's not capturing your heart. It's not making your heart beat. And then she went into ventricular tachycardia, which means your <coughs> ventricles are beating too fast to move any blood. So they were dealing with a lot of stuff, and they were you know, bringing you back and forth and then out of these rhythms. And they were actually able to stab stabilize you with the normal sinus rhythm. And then they secured that and they stabilized that and they got you down to Physicians Regional, where two weeks later, uh, fortunately, you were able to walk out of it. So we're going to bring them up one at a time. And then uh, you can come up and say your congratulations and uh, your thank you if, you, if you like. First of all, we have Lieutenant Ernie Williams. You're going to come up, guys, and you're going to stay up here, okay? Firefighter Nicholas Kemmer. Acting Lieutenant Calvin Payne. Congratulations, guys. snowboards three years ago when Jack and I retired. My husband's 41 years with the fire department and my two heart attacks, I was dead. And I had my husband right by my side. I would not be here today if I didn't have him, these guys, guys. And, the, and the fire department in St. Louis. Um, so it's all good. I'm very thankful every day that I wake up that I'm uh, my doctor told me that a woman my age, I'm 65, a woman my age, having two life event, death events that I had, 3% women survived that. So I'm a 3%er. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, to thank these guys also. I mean, I was at a total loss of what to do, uh, so on and so forth, and uh, this fellow goes, we're only going to take her to one hospital, and one only. Because we didn't really know where We didn't know where to go. But I, I can tell you this, is that uh, you're forever in her thoughts and prayers. Uh, you know, she had a triple bypass here to put four stents in her in St. Louis, and we fired that cardiologist, obviously, <laughs> up there, so. But the point is, 
without you guys, she wouldn't be here. And I was in this service long enough, and I think as Chief was saying, nobody ever comes back and says, hey, thank you. You know, and we felt it was so important that we do, because um, I know my guys have got all bummed out, going, oh, man, nobody ever comes by and says, you know, diddly squat, but uh, you guys are wonderful. And uh, deep gratitude to you. The chief, be proud of them. Yeah. We are. Thank Very. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a hard act to follow. Yeah. <laughs> I think we just close it up, close the meeting now. I will take a brief recess here if anybody wants to leave, not stay for the rest of the meeting that we're here for the awards. You're welcome to stay, but if you'd like to leave, we'll take a short break. God, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having this great fire department here. Well, you were the recipient of the best trained individuals here. Anyway. You're very welcome. I guess we can come back to order for the rest of the remaining crowd. <laughs> uh, we need a, a motion for the disposal report. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, old business. Anything? Hmm. Not that I can recall. A 98-year-old guy is being well taken care of. Good. That's the last word I got. Is he still? He's at the terraces now. Oh, he yeah. is here. Okay, good. He's been transferred down. Good. And we help facilitate that. All's well that ends well. Yep. Uh, new business. Um, we need a motion to approve the new organizational chart that's in your package. There was only a couple minor changes on it. Um, I was unable to be prepared for this meeting today because I happened to get my electronic messages. Okay. So I'll just stay out of this. It's actually in the pack if you want to take okay. a fast look well, at it. It's, and I can give I'll, a brief just, overview if you'd like, sir. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, that would be the best thing. Just I'll, I'll look it over. I just don't want to make the motion a second. I'll make that motion. You, go ahead and second. second you know, we'll have some discussion on it. You want yeah, to basically what it was is uh, the organizational chart changed a little bit. Uh, instead of the administrative finance director reporting to the assistant chief or the and then having the HR coordinator report to the administrative director. They both are going to report to me, and along with the director of finance, which is Mr. Kaufman. They, those three are going to report to me. The only other minor change was one of our administrative assistants who is permanently assigned to prevention. Instead of having them report to the administrative finance director, they're going to, she is going to report to, or that person is going to report to the assistant fire marshal. It just didn't make much sense for that person who asked, in this case Lisa, hey, can I have the day off? And then she have to go back and ask the, the fire marshal and assistant fire marshal, is everything okay? Can she take the day off? Sure. So those were the changes uh, as far as the administrative finance director reporting to me uh, because of budgetary reasons and for um, audits and all that just made more sense for her to report right to me rather than to go through the assistant chief and the assistant chief come back to me. Same thing with HR. She's going to be part of the, um, um, for the uh, confidentiality and the physicals and for negotiations. That way she reports directly to me. Not That's to say the assistant chief is not going to be, he's going to be intimately involved in it. He is still the second in charge. If I am in my absence, they are to report to him. But if, uh, but if they need something right away, that's what the basic the changes are. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 The next item is the uh, motion to accept a proposal from 10-8 for the new Pierce pumper truck. Um, if we get a, a, somebody make a motion in a second, then we'll have a discussion on that. I'll make, make that motion. 
I'll second it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to throw it to you, Chief. Yeah, what this is is uh, we budgeted for this truck uh, at the beginning of the budget uh, the budget year. Uh, it came in a little higher than what we liked, but we did make some changes on it, and the changes that we did make, they did not uh, charge us for. So basically, we had budgeted $600,000 for the, the new pumper to replace uh, Engine 21, who, which is a uh, 2009. So it's 12 years. By the time this truck comes in, it's going to be over 12 years old. Uh, the reason why we're doing it a little earlier than we'd like to is we've got told for two reasons. One, in February, the price is going to go up anywhere from 8 to 9% because of supply chains and, and so on and so forth. And the other thing, the other reason is, is now when we first started looking at this back when we budgeted, it was a eight to 10 month build time. Now it's, uh, we're getting a guarantee of 12 to 13 months because this is a truck that we'd built before. If this was a brand new truck that we'd never built before, it would be about a 16 to 18 month build time. So we want to get it on, on the books, get it going now. Uh, and that's not to say that they, if they run into a supply problem, that it won't bump it out, but we need to get it now sooner than later. But having looked over the proposal, we got a, we're getting a uh, significant, I want to say over $19,000 prepayment. $19,500, and also uh, they're allowing us two trips up there to do the post and a print review or a mid-build mid and a final. And it can save... It'll save anywhere from like uh, it was seven, eight, or nine percent. Yeah. They're not sure exactly what the increase is going to be, but they know it's going to. It's, be. it's not going to be the normal three percent. Right. They bump up every. It year. was one of those things when we talked to the salesman. He says well, it's going to be seven to nine percent. I think we're going to charge nine, but if we, if the parts and the supply chain holds, we'll only charge you the seven. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so uh, I got a bridge. I'll sell you too. So. <laughs> Chief, the, the two thousand nine vehicle like. Approximately how many miles does it have on it? That's one of our busier trucks. It was in uh, it's downtown, so now it's out at Station 6. Uh, Lieutenant Brown, do you know approximately how many? I'm going to say in the 80,000 range, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, it might be, it might be in the mid to upper 80s. Well, and actually, the miles aren't as important as the, the hours and right. the, the beating to death of the and, pump. And I'll be honest, that engine, uh, that engine, that motor incident is an ILS 9. They had quite a bit of problems. That motor has been rebuilt at least once, if not tw halfway really? rebuilt. It's they call dusting, like it sucked in some bad stuff and floated a valve, and so we've had a little bit of problems with little gremlins, as I like to call it. So it's uh, you know, knock on wood, the last three years we haven't had any major issues with it, but about four to five years ago we had significant issues with it. So it's not the mileage, any the, the no, decision, it's more the... It's operation. more the years um, and the mileage altogether. Uh, what we tend to do here at Bonita, each department is a little bit different. I know Estero does 10 years on the line and two or three in reserve. Uh, our past practice has been 12 years on the line, two or three in reserve. Um, so, and again, depending on let's use uh, the old ladder 25. We were having significant problems with it, so we decided to replace it two years early. So it depends on what we're going with. Okay. So that's the rule of thumb right Thank now. You. You're welcome. Any other questions? No, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we need a motion to approve the reselection of Bradley Brown to the Firefighters Pension System Board. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> All right, Chief, you're up. All right, just a few things just to keep you guys uh, apprised of the situation here at the fire department. Uh, just so you guys all know, Toys for Tots has already started. We've already put out boxes. We've uh, already started collecting toys. If you look behind you in that room, there's already started to, our collection's already there. Uh, the, that's the reason why we're having the meeting uh, about two weeks early is, is the reason for that. Starting on Friday, this room will be turned into our toy store. So um, keep you apprised of that. Uh, we will start on December the 13th, the week of the 13th through the 17th, we'll be distributing toys. Families will be coming in here, picking out the toys that they, uh, they get. Then on starting about December 22nd, we'll be giving away bicycles. That's going to last, you know, however long we have bicycles. So if we have 50 bikes, it's going to last a couple days. If we, have, if we have 100 bikes, it may last a little bit longer than that. Uh, but I do, I would be remiss if I didn't throw a shout out to the Bonita Springs Assistance Office. They're our partners in this. 
anybody who wanted Toys for Tots had to go to Benita's assistant's office, fill out the proper forms, and the Benita's assistant's office did vet them. So this isn't just, you know, somebody walking around off the streets. They're vetted. They're in need of them. So, and then we'll see them all on the 13th. Uh, the next thing I have is kind of dovetailing on what Commissioner Murphy said. Again, Holiday in the Park, December 7th. We'll have a presence there. We'll have our first aid tent. Uh, we'll have trucks there. We'll have our uh, giveaways. We'll have our stuff out there. We'll have our name out there. So we'll have some guys out there in the, in the uh, Kubota running safe. You're going to help bite the tree? Uh, yeah. Who's going to do that? It's going to be the city council, then whoever else wants to be up there. Okay. So we'll I get a list. The sheriff and the fire department. We're going to. Mm, I haven't heard that from Laura. I'll we've check always, with. We've always done it with the council. Yeah, well, that, that's what it said in the newspaper, though, that it would yeah. be the sheriff and the fire department. Yeah, yeah. In that's the past, I know it's, it's been with the cat. Usually, yeah. we're in charge of that. But, well, but again, as uh, as partners with the city, I know we'll be invited up on the stage and give away stuff. Uh, I'll confirm that with Laura Taylor and the city and Nicole, and get mm -hmm. back to you guys. I this think week. Nicole already sent something out to us about it. I haven't been getting any messages. Yeah. So, I'll confirm it and get out either in a text or or face to face. Give you a call. Thank you. Uh, the other holiday party that's coming up is the our holiday event is the Chamber of Commerce holiday event. It is December the 16th at Spring Run from 5 to 8. And again, space is limited based on the seating. If anybody wants to go, please get a hold of Anna Marie as soon as possible and let them know. If your spouses would like to go, they have to pay for it unless your spouse is a member of the Chamber and they go through their business or their their club or whatever but it's uh, $75 but we're more than happy to register them we just need to know that in advance and then we'll collect the do we want to get a head count now mm -hmm. who's gonna go are you going yep can I tell you in the next that's uh, fine yeah just to let Anna Marie know okay okay um, not me you're not going my daughter will be here for the last day that day okay I'm in okay my wife's a member so yeah that's so yeah. Um, so yeah just if you for those of you, uh, we'll let Vice Chairman Casilla know and when he gets back, and then just let Anna Marie know. Uh, the next, uh, it'll be right around the same time that we have our next meeting, but I just want to put it out there. January 13th is, a, is the business after hours. It's the rescheduling of the one that they had for last month that got rained out down in 10 cities. So again, if you want to go to it, let Anna Marie know. Uh, train wants to go out on a boat at night. This time of the year in Naples is nuts. <laughs> hey, uh, just so, just to bring you aware of it, if you're around here on December the 15th, uh, Lee County SO will be doing a drone class out back using uh, our field and a tower for a little drone class they're putting on. So when is that? December 15th. the 15th. What time? Uh, they didn't say. Just oh. said during the day. So they'll have their drones out here. A couple of them. I don't think there'll be any firepower on it. By, by the way, I think Larry Casola did say he wanted to go on that boat trip at the last. He week. he did on the last one. I will confirm with him. We'll have a little bit of time, but he's he, on a boat trip. He was now. registered on the boat trip the last time. <laughs> he's right. on a cruise. <laughs> so, uh, the next thing on my list is just for your information: engine twenty-eight uh, blew a transmission. Uh, we wouldn't go into gear. Uh, we had to get it towed to Allison. Basically, we're looking at about a ten thousand dollar repair to have a new rebuilt, a remanufactured with a warranty transmission put in it. So it's up there right now being repaired. Hmm. Do we have insurance on something like that? No. Okay. No. It's if it was in an accident or something like that, but the insurance doesn't cover mechanical breakage or okay. anything like that. Uh, the last thing on my list, um, and I apologize to Commissioner Murphy because he doesn't really know anything about it because I sent it out on email on Monday. Uh, Hand this up to you guys real quick. Are you sure? And I just got these today. That's why I didn't put it in Thank you. So basically, uh, so what it is is uh, you got the board knows that again when we were doing the budgeting process, we uh, budgeted to replace the, the light rescues that we have. We've been looking at it. We've been calling people. We've been calling our uh, partners at the state. Uh, we've been calling a different manufacturers. We've talked to 10-8. All of them say, hey, if you can get a chassis, we'll build you a rescue. We can't get a chassis uh, because of the uh, chip shortage. Uh, mm -hmm. When I called Gerber or I've even talked to Rick Hendrick, who gets from all over the United States, they basically say, we don't know when we can get it. 
if you want to pay retail, sure, we can get you something retail, but you know, under state bid contract, we can't get anything like that. And the difference between the two is let's use my Tahoe, the one that I have. Uh, we paid thirty-two thousand dollars for it. Retail is fifty something, yeah. so it's not quite double. So we get quite a discount. So with that being said, uh, we I reached out to Fouts Brothers, who built the last light rescues that we had. They currently aren't building light rescues because there's not a calling for it. There's not. They can't make the money on it, basically. So they're building these mini pumpers like we have at Station 7. They have one on that's getting ready to come off the line. It's considered a demo unit because it's not specifically built for somebody. They were going to use it as a stock unit to take around and say, hey, do you want to buy one of these? So that one is coming off the line uh, the middle of December. Uh, we are able to purchase that and take delivery of it by the middle to end of December. Nice. Uh, the price on it is two hundred thirty-nine. I got a quote of two hundred thirty-nine thousand um, dollars. That's with us picking it up. I've talked to a couple of members of the board. We're going to get another quote on to have to see how much it is to deliver. If it's reasonable, we'll put that into the price. Uh, but with that being said, we only budgeted one hundred sixty. Uh, if you recalled. We only budgeted 600 for uh, for the new engine, so we have approximately 1.180 million in the depreciation reserve fund. So what I'd like to do is purchase this <laughs> purchase this mini pumper for a rescue and or uh, for a replacement of Station 27 because Station 27 has the same style truck. If something happens at Station 7 where that truck goes out of service, we cannot put a full size engine down there just won't fit so this will serve two two purposes so what my proposal is to buy get a consensus and buy this one before it's gone and then the money that we're short on both trucks take it out of the depreciation I will bring it back next month in January's board meeting for the budget transfer on that and what is the price of the kind of this? 239,000 <clears throat> well what makes total sense over the rescue is this has pump capabilities as well as just being a, a, a rescue unit, um, the difference in price plus the availability, being able to get it now uh, versus having Absolutely. God knows when we're going to get yep. the one that we need um, and, and we have the money. Um, I'll, I'll make the motion that we do that and we take it from that fund. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that, that'll get that ball rolling because I think what the the chief and I had a discussion, and the guy told him, "You don't buy it, I'll sell it. It's going to be gone before it rolls off the line." So it's a, you know, the, the, and that's it, just not a sales tactic. No, it isn't be because no. right now it's like if you need it, you can't get it. So um, we're going to be. I don't want to get in a bidding war over it. You know, so. No, and you know, there's no guarantee that they're going to get any more chassis to build any more of these demo, demo units. Can you, can you use one of the current chassis to rebuild a new? No. Because it's not the chat, it's not the box that is wrong with with Rescue 21, okay. our little light rescues. It's the chassis. Okay. You know, the mo it's got, oh, heck, I think the re we've got two of them that are the same. The one that runs out of Station 1, we pretty much ran it to death, and now it's in reserve. And the one that was in reserve, we pulled out of reserve and switched them. I think the one in reserve, uh, uh, Rescue 29, has in the neighborhood of 112,000 miles on it. And they're both 05s, 08s, 08s. To highlight so, how desperate the chief was, he even agreed to get a Dodge. Yeah. And he couldn't get one. <laughs> yeah. I, one. When I, you know, in all seriousness, when I called our manufacturer or our salesman up at Garber Fleet up in Jacksonville, they sell Dodge, Chevy, and Ford. I said, I'll even take a Dodge if you, if you can find me one. And this is how bad it is, is that anybody that's, they have canceled taking orders on 21s, and they're not even accepting orders for 22s. And uh, with the Fouts brother one, if if they if it's not if they don't have a PO for a fire department, they're not getting the unit. So wow, well, we're lucky to get this one. Then. So yes. How does so, this compare to 27? It's a, it's pretty much an exact mirror of it, and I will tell you that in 2016 we paid 191 thousand dollars for that one. So in five years, you know, I don't and think it was a I don't think it was a different market then. Too. It was a different, different market, different environment. but it's still even with that, just vehicle prices going up. I don't think that's a bad inflation when we know that the Pierce fire truck goes up anywhere from three to five percent every year. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah. 
And now with tack two years of COVID and supply chains and chips, I, I think 239 is very reasonable. Sounds like a plan. And then the last thing I have on my agenda, just to keep you informed, uh, after this meeting, I'll be headed to Tallahassee to discuss uh, issues with about our COPCN and the legislation on that. And I'll be there tomorrow and most of tomorrow. Hmm. Good for you. Yes. <laughs> so. I, I found out an hour before the meeting. I didn't have to go. Yeah. So, and that uh, concludes my. Thank you. We have all the other reports in our pack. Um, as usual, nice job. Thank you. If anybody has any comments on, on any other reports? Motion to adjourn. Oh, I still have to. No, I still have to legally ask for public comment. Now, motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Thank you.